Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. I've been putting out a lot of Octane videos lately, and I know some people have been downloading the demos, and other people have been dusting off their copy if they hadn't been using it. And so I thought to be useful, or the most useful thing I could do, is probably just put out a, a scene file with a lot of Octane materials in it so people can kind of deconstruct it. So this is based on the Nine Sphere scene that ships with Moto and has Moto materials. I've translated these to Octane materials. Then I actually doubled up the number of spheres. So there's two groups of spheres here. So there's actually 18 different sort of materials on these. So I'll just go over them super fast in this video. And I think the best thing to do is just download these to uh, deconstruct it and get a feel for the Octane way of doing things. I think Moto is at an interesting place right now. 15.2 was just released. Um, the old renderer, the classic Moto renderer, which was so great for so many years, it's not a path tracer, it's not GPU enabled, and it is definitely getting a bit dated. Um, the new Moto render, Empath, is a path tracer, and it's somewhat GPU enabled right now. It can use optics for um, finding triangle intersections, so part of ray tracing, but the shading is still done via CPU, and, and I know that's being worked on, but it's gonna be a bit yet before Empath is fully usable. It doesn't really work with Moto's preview yet. It has a quick cam feature, but you know that's kind of a, a Band-Aid until this whole thing is done. So Octane is really, I think, the best bet for rendering Moto right now in, in the end of 2021 here and going into 2022. V-Ray, which is also obviously a great renderer, stop supporting Moto at 14. So unless they start supporting Moto again in Moto 15, Moto 16, uh, and until Empath is fully done, I think Octane is your best bet for rendering in Moto. Um, in fact, it may be your best bet even when everything is, all those are done, or even if V-Ray gets supported again and Empath is done, it still may be the best renderer out there. But it's certainly worth a look, and this is just a quick deconstruction of the materials. So you have, um, you know, let me just really quickly take a look at some of these. So we've got a sort of a rough metal material using the metallic material. And so one of the things about Octane, if you haven't used it much, uh, you do have an Uber material or universal material that's similar to Moto's Uber material. And, this, you know, renders have gone back and forth over the years. Early on, you would pick like a uh, like a Blinn material or something like that if you're working or a Fong if you're working in Maya or early like Lightwave or something. And then, you know, there was different sorts of materials for different situations, and people didn't really like that. They wanted one material for all situations, and that was sort of the Uber material. That's what Moto has, and other renderers sort of followed suit. And then, really, the sort of specialized materials came back. And while Moto, or I'm sorry, Octane does have a universal material, you really tend to use these specialized materials. In this case, a, a metallic material. On this one, a specular material, this colored glass, with some absorption, okay? So you're absorbing this color. Rather than tinting the transmission red, you absorb red. Uh, this is just a plastic material, which is a glossy material. That's the common material you would see in uh, Octane and the material that most Moto materials are converted to. And then we've got another metallic material here without much uh, roughness. And here we've got a diffused material. So this has no specular quality at all. It's a really matte material. And this is a specular material again with some a uh, little bit of uh, uh, dispersion on it. So that little rainbow there is some dispersion. And this is an emissive material. In the original Moto 9 sphere scenes, it used an, a spherical light that was uh, made into a, a, a visible to camera, sort of a light sphere. That actually works in, in Octane. You can actually, on the Octane tab of a uh, spherical light, you can actually turn into a visible light and it'll respect Moto's you know, diameter radius and, and power and everything else. But you should really know how to set up an emissive material. So um, that's an emissive, it's just a regular sphere with an emissive material. This is another um, diffuse material and it's using vertex displacement, which means it's using um, a procedural texture for displacement, so you have to use vertex displacement. There's two displacements in, in Octane that you can use. You can use an image displacement, a texture displacement, which uses an image, a bitmap image, and you can define like you know 1K or 4K or 8K resolution. It looks fantastic. But in order to use a procedural texture, you need to use a vertex displacement. So again, uh, I think I cover these in another video, so I'm not going to go into it here. But So that, that sort of wraps up these. And then, oh, of course, the hair material. So the fur material you'll see in, in Moto in the nine uh, balls or nine spheres scene um, is not going to, here's our fur, is not going, the fur material in Moto is not going to translate to Octane. So what you have to do is you select your uh, sphere. Let me just, uh, I'm going to pause this guy. 
let me show you what I've got here. We've got our fur ball, and then I've got some baked fur there. So what you would do is you would actually, you wouldn't have this yet. You wouldn't have uh, baked your render cache. So you would have, you would turn your fur on, and then you'd come over here and you'd say render, and you would say bake geometry cache, and you'd check fur and you hit okay. And then you'll get this uh, fur, um, these baked fur hairs here, which are just polylines. And then you turn on, in the curves, you turn on render curves, and you give it um, a radius, usually less than a millimeter, like half a millimeter, it looks pretty good. And then you can add the octane uh, fur material, which, uh, or hair material, which is really cool. And in this case, you can add, you could, the, the hair material, again, there's a whole other video on this on Pixel Fondue. You can do it by adjusting the amount of melanin. So a little bit for blonde, a lot for brunette, sort of in between for redhead with some phao melanin in it. Or you can turn it to albedo and you can, you know, pick up, you know, make pink hair or whatever. Um, yeah, so that's these. And then let me take a look at the other nine. Okay, so here's the other nine balls uh, or nine spheres. And so let's look at this one. This is a wax material. And this is actually a layered material. So you want to take a look at this one and see how this is done. It's actually a diffused material with uh, an octane um, a random walk subsurface scattering medium here. And it's got a bit of a vertex uh, displaced texture. There we go, a little displacement there. And then on top of that, we've got a specular layer for the sheen. This is just a uh, matte cap. So we've got the big red matte cap that comes with Moto and we're using the uh, matte cap projection, which is right here under projections. So, you know, uh, so we've got a transform here, and we have projections here. So with a Moto texture locator, it has the projections and the transforms all in the same locator, right? So you have a spherical projection that has all the transforms, the rotation, the scale, and the, uh, you know, the translation on that one locator. And Octane is two, right? So you've got a projection here, node, and then you have a separate um, transform, or a projection node and a separate transform node. Just so you know, it's a little bit different. Although you can also use Moto Texture Locators for any sort of projection. You just pipe them in. There's an Octane projection out of the Moto Texture Locator, and you just pipe it right in. And if you have an image in your um, uh, uh, shader tree here like this plane right here where I select the plane you'll see this here it is I'll just do it automatically for you so there's an octane projection out going in and you can you know adjust all your stuff here on moto if the you know repeats on UV and blah 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 and it'll all translate to octane so that's that's a nice little feature um, okay so there's the mat cap oh we got a tune shader here if you want to see how tune material works um, this one you typically have to, to get the it will it'll look all black until you pick the camera light or a tune light and to get a tune light you need to add like a spotlight and check the tune light octane in the octane tab check the tune light uh, checkbox um, but that's a nice little tune shader this is a frosted glass shader so it's a specular shader with a lot of um, roughness there and also using the ggx energy preserving uh, brdf so each of these materials you can choose from a BRDF uh, model there that basically determines how the light rays are sort of scattered in the microservice. Um, and if you look at the Octane 2021 video I did, it I go over kind of in detail why that energy preserving BRDF is, is much better, especially for rough materials. Okay, this one is just that soap bubble material. So it's a specular material with thin wall on, so you don't get a bunch of refraction. And it's got quite a bit of, um, uh, it's got some uh, film uh, width on there. So that's sort of a filmy surface. And then we have a triplanar map. So this is just the wood texture that comes with Moto. I think a cherry wood. And it's plugged into a, it has a triplanar projection and it's plugged into a triplanar texture. So you have a triplanar texture, which is right down here. You plug that in and then you plug your image into each one of these. You can actually plug a different image into each, you know, positive or negative axis you want to blend in. I'm just using the same one for all three. And then I need to use a triplanar projection as well. So not a UV projection or a spherical or whatever, you need a triplanar projection. So that's a triplanar um, material. And that's actually really important. I think a lot of like pixel materials are meant, you know, if you, you don't have good UV maps, use triplanar. So uh, this is a car material. So it's another layered material. I've got a metallic material at the base. I've got, um, this is using Octane 2021 flakes uh, procedural texture in the normal to get these metallic flakes. And it's got a really uh, kind of a soft roughness. A lot, you know, it's 0.33 roughness is pretty soft. And so soft metallic roughness, you see that highlight underneath the sharp specular highlight, which is the next layer on this layered material. So we have a specular um, layer on top of that. And it's the thin layer, kind of like this bubble right here wrapped around 
this metal one. And then on top of that, we have a sheen layer and you can see that on the edges there. There's actually two effects going on the edges. You have the sheen, the specular sheen. You also have an edge tint, a purplish edge tint in this, uh, which we have a channel for in the metallic material in Octane. This is why I like um, these specific materials rather than an uber material, rather than taking like a, an uber material and setting all the settings to make it metallic. And there's always a ton more settings on an uber material. And then, you know, it, you know, these are really specific uh, things like edge tent to this material. So you don't really want, I don't know, just, it's just easier to deal with, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, last one. Oh, we got the cube here. Just wanted to show how Octane uh, does rounded edges. That will actually work if you just turn it on in your moto material, turn on rounded edges, Octane will see that. And if you, you know, add an Octane override, it'll translate it into this node graph and it'll add that for you. Um, and then we've got this uh, composite material. Actually, this is a mixed material. So I'm using... Uh, checkerboard texture to just um, as a mask between this purplish metallic material and this greenish sort of colored glass with this green absorption on there. So you can take a look at that as well. So, and then I guess this last one, this planar material is using a mixed material as well. It's got these colored squares, which is an Octane 2021 procedural texture, and then just one or white uh, for the um, uh, second texture. And another thing, kind of weird thing about Octane, it'll actually accept floats for things like uh, uh, colors, which you expect three different floats for, three different values. It'll just sort of run one across all three, but you can, of course, plug in a, any sort of procedural texture or image there. And then I have um, this little Pixel Font Duo logo as the mask between the colored squares and the white. So that's that. I think it's enough to go on. Again, the look in the link uh, below for the link back to the Pixel Fondue website and the link to a zip file with, um, that's just this scene with the embedded texture images. And play around in Octane. Um, it could be your best bet for a renderer, uh, not just for 2021, 2022, but it, it may, the way they're developing, it may be the best render uh, there is going forward. Yum, yum.